So hello folks, this is Garth at GW Leathercraft, and today I'm going to start a series on sewing machines. Now of course, sewing machines means leather sewing machines, and kind of industrial style leather sewing machines, and of course I'm speaking particularly about of the uh, 5100 Texo because that's the one I have. Um, the 5100 Texo is basically the same machine as a Cobra Class 4. Um, if, you're, if yours is a Cobra Class 4 or if you're thinking about a Cobra Class 4 then a lot of the stuff is interchangeable. Um, the Texo, the main reason why a Texo for me, it uh, wasn't the name, I didn't uh, think, oh, it's Techie, it's, you know, it wasn't that. Uh, they're, uh, the company's based in Canada. I'm in Canada. Um, I really thought the shipping would be less, and it probably was. But in the end, the big thing was, because it's a Canadian company, I was able to get uh, financing, okay? Now, I know a lot of people today are rolling in money, you know, they got all kinds of money and nobody needs financing but me, but that was the way it was. Um, as it, you know, it's a, it's a major purchase for any shop starting out, uh, you know, and, and maybe eventually I'll have two or three of them, but for right now, one is enough. And, the, the, the first thing you should consider when buying a machine is what the job you're doing. Um, the 5100 is basically a heavy harness stitcher. Um, there is only one of their machines, the same with the Cobras, that is bigger and it is not really, the only change in the capacity is in the throat depth. Uh, for Cobra it's called a King Cobra and it's quite a bit deeper here okay so you can handle wider things and and also the um the texo has one similar the um um but for most things this is adequate and and you know for me it it is um the uh the other the other things to consider uh when you're thinking about what you're going to buy um now for leather, uh, especially veg tan, um, because when you poke a hole in veg tan and then you want to, you can't re erase that hole. Uh, it just doesn't go away. Sometimes with uh, chrome tan or certain spots, you can get away with a little bit of a mess, but pretty much with veg tan or any work you're going to do with harness or with like I do quivers, gun belts, that sort of stuff, uh, you get one shot at it, okay? So you need a speed reducer. All that said to say you need a speed reducer. Um, you know, like, don't go without it, right? Because it is uh, just crazy to try because this, the, the thing is going to go too fast. Um, the power of these machines is really, you know, quite impressive. Um, and, um, that, I mean, that's what they're for. Now, I'm just not sure of the foot, uh, how much the foot will raise, but basically anything you can uh, put under the foot uh, will sew, okay, because uh, that, that's, the, that's the measurement. Now, it's either three-quarter or seven-eighths, it's something like that. It, it's, it's substantial, uh, probably more than what most people will sew. Um, but, you know, so it's adequate F for most, just generally everything you're going to sew in heavy stuff. Um, it has a walking foot mechanism, which is important for, especially for veg tan, but really any leather, and quite often they use them for other things as well, like canvas and, and uh, nylon and all that stuff can benefit from a walking foot, but the the when 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 you have a a material that is uh, slippery, 
uh, whether it's because it's actually slippery or because it's soft and you can't put any pressure on it. That is the problem with, with leather. Um, when you think of a piece of nylon or a piece of canvas, um, you you press on it, that's, well, that's what you get. That, that amount of pressure holds it, but with leather, it kind of can squeeze out between your fingers. That is considered slippery. Um, so, so that is the reason for the walking foot. Now, what the mechanism does, I'm just going to move you a little and, and zoom you in. I'm going to walk, I'm going to show you the walking foot because that is, if I can, you're on a tripod and I want to get this in there first as last. Okay, you should be able to see it there. Now, the foot is down now. And in case you're wondering, that's a single toe foot, a left toe foot. But just watch the needle. The needle goes down. The needle comes up. And on the upstroke, the foot the center foot and the and the the uh, uh, the the dog that's underneath move backwards, and then they kind of come ahead. Okay, well I say backwards, backwards away from the camera. It uh, it's actually moving the work through the uh, the stitch. Um, I'll do it a little faster and maybe you can see a little bit better, but they, they there's a walk to it and it's important and If you're quite often I, I see comments and questions and I guess the main question with with uh, Sewing machines in general is how cheap can I get one for and that that's what everybody wants is a cheap option uh, But you, you, for leather you need a walking foot you need a, a, a speed reducer those two things you need uh, enough depth to the so the foot will come up um, so that you can clear your work under here um, and, and two uh, maybe secondary but you also need a large bobbin now the reason for that is because you're going to be using large thread and a small bobbin will just empty out quicker. Now, you can work around that one, but generally, if you get the other items, you'll get the large bobbin too. Now, more than that's not incredibly large, but compared to a whole machine, it holds a lot of thread. And and that is, uh, is something you're looking for. Um, now, first, last, somewhere along the line, you're gonna want a bobbin winder. Now, I'm gonna move you back. Now on the tech saw, uh, there we go. The bobbin winder is that. Okay. Now it's not the whole. It's not the only component, but that is basically where the bobbin goes. Is on this post. So um, it has an integrated bobbin winder, and it works pretty good. Some of them have an external bobbin winder. I suppose if you got something that was salvaged out of a you know some old shop or something it might not come with its own bobbin winder you're going to need a bobbin winder so this lever is the um, stitch length and reverse lever um, you adjust the stitch length of course you loosen off this thumb knob and you can set it wherever you want it but in the down position it is uh, forward and you just flick it up like that for reverse and it it carries the stitch length reverse or forward so you can back up uh in the same stitches you just made now what one I'll, I'll mention one problem here that people run away with and they think they can just sew them back in reverse um it's meant for short periods like tacking and things like that um, you're not going to be able to sew up your whole bag going in reverse. It'll do things to the machine. I'm telling you, that's what it'll do. So don't run away with that idea. 
Um, now, moving over here, if I can get the camera to adjust, you have the big flywheel, hand wheel, whatever, this thing here. Um, and you can uh, move, uh, advance or, or, or go backwards with that. So this is the view under the table. And this is your control box, um, on off switch. And this indicates your RPM um, of the motor, motor RPM, because the motor is variable speed. Now, your, uh, because you have a speed reducer that reduces the speed uh, a, a certain amount, um, you would have to measure the pulleys and determine that. Uh, there could be a chart somewhere, but this really has little to do with your stitches per minute, okay? But this is uh, a guide, like for, you know, if you're used to sewing at a 1,000, don't bump it up to 3,500. But this one uh, will go from 500 to 3,500 RPM on the motor. This part, this little switch is for the red uh, guide line for your stitch line. Um, I don't use it, but that's where you turn it on if you were going to use it. And of course, you can see your pulleys, and you can't. I guess you can see the motor back in behind there. Um, that stuff there, and and of course your belt. Oh yeah, and I'll just swing you around. You do get this drawer here for your little uh, screwdrivers and and bits and bobs. So you can see there the uh, ooh, uh, the the work light. It's LED, uh, really quite bright, and you can see it clamped on the back of the table. That's where your on off is, and you it runs through under the overarm of the machine and and is more or less out of the way there. So I'll swing you around, and right in the middle of your frame more or less, they're above the needle, this thing, okay, this black tube on this bracket, this is your um, uh, red guide line. I'll turn it on. Uh, I suspect you're not, oh yeah, it's showing up as a line. Um, so uh, that gives you an idea of where your stitches are going, okay, and, and can guide you uh, in your sewing. Um, I didn't find it to be any help and I haven't used it, but it's there um, uh, for those that want it. Um, also, I'll dig it into my drawer. A lot of people love this thing. Um, this is uh, uh, your drop down um, edge guide roller edge guide. Now uh, it uh, bolts on the back. I took the bolts off and and I uh, but it when it's in use it drops down here and you can adjust it in and out to uh, follow the edge of the work or so the edge will follow it. Now I would say it's a pretty good one okay but it uh, it wasn't for me and I'll explain why. Um, most of the time when you're doing edges um, for me, uh, it's a, a lined object, and I usually leave the lining, or at least half the time, I leave the lining full size, which is oversized, and then so the edge guide wouldn't work. And some of the stuff I was doing was rather big, and it was getting in the way, so I took it off. I usually work to a scribed line, and uh, the um, edge guide wasn't necessary. At some point, I may put it back and try it again, but, you know, for right now, it's not on there. Uh, so I realize that you're not, um, uh, there's no 
thread in the machine or no leather. Um, but um, just for the purposes of this, the needle is in the up position. That's the end of it there. And that would be where you would want it for um, putting work in or taking it out. Okay. Now when you're starting to sew, you push down on the pedal. Everything's working, 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 working. And then you just let it go. Okay. You let it go. It's it's tra It coasts over. Uh, depending on how fast you're going is how far it coasts. But you take notice now the needle is down. Okay. Uh, the foot is clear enough to uh, allow you to turn the work, uh, but the needle is down. So what you can do now is if you want to make a 90 degree turn or any 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 maneuvering, you can do that. You can let it stop. The needle is down, and then you can just turn the work. So uh, no, I should I should correct myself. The the presser foot is down holding the work, but you can raise the presser foot and then of course turn the work on the needle and then lower the presser foot again. So and then like you're sewing along, you do all this sewing and the needle is down and then you're done. So then you push the back of the pedal, which is opposite to normal, and then the needle comes up, the presser foot is still holding the work but you push the other pedal which I will get to. So that is the needle positioning system. So on to the next thing. So these are the pedals and you can see the caster, um, the one caster there uh, and I guess the other one on the other side. Uh, it rolls around on those casters. Uh, they are locking, so that's handy. But these are your pedals. Um, this is your your the one that makes the uh, the sewing machine run. Okay, by pushing down with your toe, and then and then like uh, because we've already discussed the needle positioning system it stops in the down position and then if you want to get it in the upper upper position for removing your work or whatever you just push down with your heel and it just comes up okay this is your pedal for raising your foot okay so uh, you just push down on that and the foot comes up the more you push the higher it comes within within the the range that you have Now, I mean, this isn't a, a really a part of the machine, but it comes with it. It's the thread stand. It it has spot for two spools of thread um, with their posts, and um, it's made for the cone type thread, which is you know standard for industrial machines. And I'll just swing you up, and you can see the threads going up, and up at the top there is your. I don't know what it's called. It's a bar with a couple ceramic holes in it, and and uh, the thread passes through there. All this is done to keep the threads in some sort of order, so you can, um, um, you know, they're not hanging down, they're not getting in the way. They're they they have to be in a certain spot, and that's good. I should mention just I um, this this thing here. This is your adjustment for your um, presser foot pressure. Okay, so the, f the more you screw it down, uh, the more the uh, pressure is applied on the presser foot. That's important. You you don't want a lot for veg tan. Uh, you want a fair amount for chrome tan and other things vary as well. So that allows you to adjust it. So w this is the bobbin case here and the bobbin cover, bobbin case cover. So it just turns a little bit and comes off. Um, you're going to want to put that back. So I know I've seen people not use it all the time. The thing is, is if you're sewing and you forget and you get your finger down in there, it's not very good. So this is the, the bobbin case 
holder. I don't know what this particular part is called, but it's where the bobbin goes anyway. So I'm just going to load an empty bobbin. You, if you were filling it, you'd put one in there like that and just shove it in. Okay, that's it. Put the cover back on. Well, after you've loaded the, the thread. But I'm not getting into that right now. That'll come later. But that's where the bobbin goes. And then, of course, if I can do this without making everybody sick, seasick and I'll have to there the um, you, you, a lot of your tension controls are here this is the primary what I would call the primary tension knob and I think that's in the shot isn't it yeah and this is the secondary one you have different connection points here it's important to get the thread threaded in there right um, and, um, you know, you're, you, it, you won't take you long to get on to that, but in the beginning, it, it is a little intimidating. Um, you know, that is, uh, the basic machine, um, most of the major components. Um, and that is really all I wanted to do in this video is go over the parts and and that now my plan is to make this a bit of a, a short series I'm going to do the the oiling points and service and I'm going to do threading the machine and uh, you know and maybe some sewing and stuff like that so so that is what you can look forward to but for now this is the the basic machine um, that you're going to have if you order it now of course I should mention that it doesn't come already set up. There is some work to, to setting it up. Um, the uh, It has casters that have to go on. Uh, the frame and the table are all assembled and on a pallet when it comes. And, and the casters, you have to put the casters on. There's some linkages to hook up, uh, not a lot. And then you have to set the machine, take it out of the foam, and set it on the table now I the when I did it I lifted it alone it was a lot but I was able to do it uh, if you're if you feel really strong no problem obviously better to have two people um, and you can hold it there long enough uh, to hook the belt on to the pulley and then the belt will keep it from tipping off the table long enough to put the bolts in it okay there's four bolts so that is the assembly I'm not going to disassemble mine to show you how to assemble it but uh, there are videos available uh, for assembly um, but once you get it assembled that this video will help a little bit with uh, the parts and everything and gives you an idea of what you get um, so in the next video I'll go over uh, hooking up the thread and getting ready to sew. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.